Las Vegas, it's Momo, Elvis Presley, Chad Sack, <laughs> MC, Chad's World, we're here with Dave Vellante, my co-host. Uh, thanks for watching. Welcome back. Chad Sack is uh, very well known in the tech circles. I see him for EMC, uh, the technology genius. John, you're making me blush. Chad, Chad, it's great to have you. This doesn't make you blush. Nothing will. This is uh, <laughs> this is we got. We got so the I, Chad bobblehead. I had no idea that Greg and and uh, Jeremy Burton were going to be doing that, man. It's uh, those guys. Just a little surprise for you. Yeah, yeah. I love it. You know. So you got You got to do the hands-on labs if you want it. Are you going to do it, Dave? Oh, you're going to you're, you're going to do the hands-on labs. Gonna give me this one. Uh, no way. Honorary. No uh, way, I'll give man. This back to you now. It's a. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and uh, leading EMC, you launched a new reality show called Chad's World. And you know you've got, you <laughs> you got a good following in the tech circles, but yep. Chad's World is a one-way world. But you guys are having a clever uh, show. Tell us about Chad's World. You bet. And your new stardom uh, as a celebrity. So, so uh, uh, you're really giving me a little too much credit there, John. Uh, I, I, I'm not really as much of a goofball as I play on TV. Right, so so, uh, I had an interesting discussion with someone here at EMC World, and uh, afterwards they go, "Oh, so you're not just a marketing guy, uh, you know? Like you know what you're talking about." I have to remind people after this event and all the silly, stupid things that we're doing, I, I'm I'm an engineer, man. It's a you know, tech guy turned I'm, into I'm a marketing nerd guy through and through. But the Chaz World thing has turned out to be way more uh, than I ever expected. Jeremy came up with the idea idea to to do something silly and fun. You know, every one of the shows includes customers and hands-on demonstrations that are are, are face melting, <laughs> awesome, but uh, uh, you know, are really there to, to highlight you know how the technology works, how customers benefit from it, and we try to make it light and fun, right? Because well, we, had, we had Greg Gotts on yeah. yesterday. Greg uh, is the creative director, works for Jeremy Burton, yeah. uh, CMO. And he's talking about lightening it up. You are a serious exec. You got some serious business that you're doing, and you can get deep on VMware and EMC. Yep. But it's fun. You're lightening it up the conversation. You're entertaining your audience in a way that, quite frankly, is different so and entertaining. Dude, so, John, the, the the life is too short to take yourself seriously. Number one. Number two. This stuff is so cool. How could you not be passionate and excited <laughs> about it? You know what I mean? It's it's easy, right? It, so tell us what is new with you right now. Yeah. Okay, you got a lot of secrets you're holding back because you got the big uh, entertainment package. It's kind of the show and the information yeah. you're transmitting tomorrow uh, at Chad's World on the on the big stage in the keynote hall. What? Give us a little tease on what's going on. There's been some trailers sure. out there. Sure. So, um, do you parachute? Uh, you know, there's only one way to find out what really happens, uh, which is to come Wednesday, 5:15. It's going to be awesome. But uh, basically, we, uh, uh, my colleague and I, Wade, my my Garth, uh, to my to my Wayne and Wayne's World <laughs> analogy, uh, who actually heads up the global V specialist team. So you know, hundreds of people around the globe that are experts in VMware, Cisco, EMC technologies. But he can also play a goofball on TV. We get lost on our way to Vegas. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna end up a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, it's after day three of, of a giant conference like this, you know, your brain's a little blurry, so we might be a little passed out on stage. And then we're going to show the story of how we got to got got to Vegas and got on stage. So, And yes, it involves the flying Elvises. Yes, it involved Jeremy saying and Greg saying, hey, can we get a picture of you on a donkey? Yes, it involved me wearing Elvis outfits. And yes, it involved parachutes. So, uh, uh, and Cadillacs. And all sorts of stuff. The so, rest, so though, you, the, 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 to connect the dots, you got to be there at five o'clock tomorrow. Right? But I got to tell you, it's going to be a total train wreck. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to, the degree of difficulty that we're going to try to pull off on Wednesday, five o'clock, be there, is through the roof. We've got five demos. We've got um, uh, uh, seven customers that are going to come on stage. You know, in front of thousands of people. The likelihood of pulling it off with a degree of difficulty of 11 is 
near zero. So it's going to be fun and entertaining no matter what. Awesome. So, uh, oh, so and free beers. Oh, that's the thing, right? Sponsored free by beer. VMware. Free Molson. Free Molson. Free, sponsored by VMware. Right. You know, our friends at Cisco and Intel and Molson Canadians it's for Canadian everybody. beer, right? <laughs> you got it. Who's your hockey team? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a Leafs fan, being from Toronto. Uh, okay. It's difficult. It's difficult to be a Leafs fan. But Who do you like uh, in the Stanley Cup? Uh, Bruins? Yeah. Sharks? I, you know, I'm, I, you know obviously, obviously now I'm rooting for the Bruins. Oh, yeah, right? okay. They're your sentimental so, favorite? Sentimental good, good favorite. Man, yeah. Good man. Original six, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, from Boston. So you got to yeah. love that. <laughs> <laughs> EMC's home turf. Yeah. Can't go wrong. We're pretty global now. You know, there's there's now more employees out on the West Coast than there well, are on the East Pat Coast. Pat Gelsinger yeah. said. We had that conversation um, with Pat. Silicon Pujo. Valley is where the innovation yeah. of IT is. And yep. uh, Jeremy's out there. Greg's out there. you got a new corporate VP in marketing. Yep. Jonathan is on board. And, new guy. Uh, you know, I, I came to EMC from a startup. I lived there in the Valley for, for seven years. So, I, I, you know, I sharks, I like them, but, you know. Yeah. It's not real hockey. Uh, <laughs> it's not real hockey. Exactly. <laughs> what was the startup you were with? Oh, what's that? Uh, what was the startup you were with? I did uh, several startups. The last one EMC acquired was a company by the name of Velocity. And ah, the, right. The, the core idea of it was interesting. It was scale-out storage out of commodity components using internal storage presented out via Ethernet. Ahead of its time. Ahead of its time. <laughs> and the idea was to make it invisible. So it was so integrated with applications, you never provisioned it, right? So if you think about where the world is now, a lot of those core ideas, you know, are, are, are part of what EMC does can, today. Can, can storage be invisible? That would be a kind of a, a cool thing for the user, wouldn't it? Storage well, being invisible. So, is that possible? So, so what we're trying to do is, you know, if you take a look at what we've done in the VMware space, you can take any one of our arrays and you can manage it from soup to nuts without leaving vCenter, right? So as, so, as, lo as soon as it's physically connected, there you could, you could live without opening the storage UI. So it's invisible, right? The more tightly we can couple with, you know, core applications, SAP, Oracle. We recently launched that uh, enterprise uh, uh, EMC storage integrator, which integrates with uh, Hyper-V, with, um, you know, all sorts of SharePoint stuff. Eventually, people don't want to see the storage. They just want it to be there like a utility, right? Yeah, so um, so we've, Chad, we've been, we've been following you. We follow your blog. Um, you know the survey that we just did in the Wikibon community. Yeah. That was pretty big. John, I don't know if you saw this. I know I sent you some stuff on it, but uh, we went out. You remember we did some reporting last year at VMworld. We, there was a lot of confusion about who's number one in virtualization, and I think we confirmed EMC's clearly number one. There was some confusion about the other guys, but so we wanted in Wikibon to go out and, and sort of revalidate that, right? Yeah. And, and we yep. did, and I think it was pretty consistent with what we saw with the Goldman Sachs surveys, with what, we, what we've seen with other surveys from guys like ESG and IDC, and, yep. and obviously we did our own. So what makes you guys number one in, in VMware storage? Other than the fact that you own VMware, but that's not really, really the reason. I mean, that's yeah. part of it, but what's the, what's the guts behind it? Take us inside. Well, how come you're so good? So, so well, thank you. They, that's very kind no, of No, the to users say, told you know, us. They, I mean, I'm just so, telling you what they said, right? So, um, that's right. EMC, number one <laughs> when it comes to VMware. Number one across storage, backup, and security. You got it. You heard it from, you heard that's it from true. Dave. That's true. That's what the users told but us. Number one, it, hands down. It, right? it comes from a lot of work. Right, so so uh, the the survey showed that 50 plus percent of customers said that they felt that EMC was the best choice when it came to storage for VMware, and I think the next closest was something around uh, the 20s. Um, the uh, and it was also interesting to see that some people reinforce that even when they're not using EMC storage. So the, one not of the some people, was, most people, yeah, mo the majority oh, yeah. of people basically said, regardless of who you're using, you wish you had EMC. Yeah, so we said, great. who's the number? Who's your primary vendor? With EMC, whether it's NetApp, uh, you know, whomever, yep. HP, IBM. Who's the best at at VMware? Right. And other than the NetApp customers, yep. every other base said, yep, absolutely. And even the NetApp customers, more of them by a good margin wanted to have EMC than EMC. Interesting. Now, the other way. now to be fair, so yep. now HP was largely the non 3 par platforms. Yep. I think if we dug into 3 par it might be a different story. So, it, so, so the, the answer to your question is actually the So why would EVA not have done as well as, as 3 par It's because the 3 par guys did a good job of yeah. integrating with VMware. So 3 par has a vCenter plugin. 3 par supports VAAI. 
three bar supports various things that VMware can do as well as being a good platform. So it's integration. It's integration. Now, EMC does more not only than three bar but than everybody, right? So so uh, whether it comes to management from vCenter, integration, we're still the only vendor, which it surprises me, whose UI in Unisphere integrates with vCenter on up so that you can see the relationships directly in the platform, right? Uh, when vSphere.next comes out, we'll be there day one with feature support for every single thing that they do, right? That doesn't come because of the fact that yes, there's this uh, financial structure that links the two companies together. Uh, you guys heard, Pat Gelsinger's a pretty focused guy, right? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Definitely. And EMC has got, uh, we're fortunate, thanks to our customers, to have a huge breadth of, of resources that can be applied to R&D and we have a huge R&D budget, we're very squarely focused on making sure that we're always hitting the mark first and best when it comes to VMware integration, yeah, period. So it's clear, so now we've done some other research. I'll show a little yeah. leg, we haven't released it yet, yeah. uh, but we'll be releasing this uh, in the next couple of weeks. We went out and we evaluated all the major vendors and their VMware integration. We had extensive discussions with them. We talked to users about them. Um, what, what, what came out, I'll just tell you the top three. Number one, by a pretty significant margin was VMAX. Yep. Right, so the VMAX guy's doing a good job of VMware integration. Yep. Number two was VNX. Yep. Number two platform as far as VNX. Number three was 3PAR. Yep. Yep. So no surprises there, and then you know the others, but those were those stood out you know, in the research. Yep. So we'll be releasing that shortly, so good job. I mean, you guys obviously, Chad, we first met, I don't know, a few years ago. Yep. We were talking about how important this was, how you guys wanted to be the best at this. You guys were putting a lot of resources into it, and now we're starting to see the fruits of that labor, right? Uh, absolutely, and we're accelerating, right? So if I take a look at our roadmap, um, not only are we first and best, but we're hitting the gas, right? We are, we're accelerating on all fronts, not just on the storage front, but Avamar is already more integrated than any other backup product. Avamar and DD have now integrated with Avamar 6, right? Uh, and uh, the same thing goes on the security front. Did you see the keynotes today, guys? Did you see? Uh, did you see um, Paul's? Just, just we, I saw. We saw parts of Paul's. Yeah, you know, so Paul made a big point about security needs to be integrated with the virtualization layer, right? Yeah, we talked and, about this with Pat last night. And RSA tight coupling, not only from a compliance view and an attestation of security in the cloud, but embedding DLP directly into vShield. So, right? so let's talk about that. So, is, is security a do-over? I mean, every year we, we, you know, January first, I look back and say. All right, are we more secure or less secure than we were last year? And I feel like we're going backwards. So is security have to be a do-over? So, so uh, that's a good question. So in my opinion, the transition towards cloud models gives us an opportunity to do a do-over where it's fundamentally easier. So if it's possible, and it is, to embed the security model directly as a wrapper around the application as the VM, in other words, wrap it build it into the, the application itself, build the virtualization layer uh, uh, so that it's fundamentally more secure, it's possible today, and we're only getting started, that the virtualized world can be more secure than the physical, right? So I, I, I do think that uh, part of the challenge around security is, yeah, there's all sorts of botnet attacks against enterprises, there's, there's uh, you know, these advanced persistent threat scenarios of, of malicious players, but a part of it comes back to what, you know, Paul, Moritz, and, and Joe, and Pat all talked about, which is our existing infrastructures are this cobbled up mess that's been constructed over years, and it's brittle, and it's, and it's uh, rigid, and all of those things also make it fundamentally a little less secure than it could be. Why hasn't this um, risk, yeah. the security risk, why hasn't that stopped Cloud growth. I mean, maybe I don't even it, think it's it slowed it. it. I mean, uh, it, I, I disagree. I, it has. You think it has? It has. So okay, so but but it hasn't stopped it in its. It tracks. hasn't stopped it. Not well, at all. Right. So why not? What's happening? So there? Give us some so, uh, eighty percent of people that they you know I think uh, that we, there was a big study that was done by some third party. I can't remember who it was. Eighty percent of CIOs said that security was their barrier to adopting either private internal clouds or external public clouds. Private ones because they can't pass an audit. Right, which by the way, if they're using RSA Archer, they can. <laughs> uh, but you know, and, and the public cloud concerns about security, uh, multi-tenancy, that sort of stuff. 
Um, but the numbers are like this. Yeah, so, so the thing is that right now, the things that are moving out into those cloud models are things where people are doing it in spite of security concerns, ignoring security concerns, right? Damn the torpedoes. Right? Damn the torpedoes. Uh -huh. a, great, a great example was, there's an unnamed customer, I'll leave their name blank, but they're based out of Germany, right? <laughs> Um, <coughs> Which city? Yeah, no. I'm, I'm not going to say the city because that would make it too clear. Across, the, neighbor, across, across the street neighbor of yeah. VMware? So, <laughs> so we, 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 we got called out for a, for a meeting with them and, and the urgency was basically that they found that somebody won an award for being green and innovating about pushing their development process into Amazon uh, Web Services. And they won the award, they got it on stage and someone comes up to the guy afterwards, goes, hey, congratulations on winning the award. By the way, uh, when you destroy those, uh, are you sure that the information's being destroyed? And by the way, you're not really pushing our source code up into that and then compiling it out there, are you? And the person says, yeah, isn't it awesome? And the guy goes, hi, I'm the CISO, yeah. right? So, and can you please stop that immediately? So the growth is coming because it's so compelling. Right that it's driving people to do it no matter what, but um, you know, I think that bit by bit at the higher levels, at the CISO and CIO and, and CEO level, the board level, it's a it's a big barrier. But on balance, so far, the, the benefits have outweighed the, whisk, yep. the risks. Can, can the industry, the enterprise industry, catch up yep. fast enough so that it doesn't impact yep. the, the top line growth? Uh, uh, I so, mean, measurably. So you can't imagine the amount of capability that we've got now uh, and you can't imagine what's around the corner. It's going to melt faces, yeah. right? We, lo we love uh, face melting. It's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be face melting. It's already pretty face melting, right? So if I basically said to a customer, "Look, if you deploy in a cloud and you're using VMware and you're running it on a V block, and I could give you one tool that would give you a dashboard that would show you against, let's say, 200 compliance standards, even though everything's fluid and moving around." as well as physical security and configuration, would you want that? And oh, if you're running in Terramark's cloud, would you want that? They go, sure. absolutely, damn straight I would, yeah. right? That's what we can do today with Archer, Chad, without even talking about the Chad, future. Chad, what's the number one, what's the top three things that you're hearing from customers? Because um, obviously VMware, you own VMware, everyone knows that, yeah. the Wall Street's getting smarter, Dave and I were talking about that at the analyst meeting and the mega launch, yeah. um, but you know, VMware still has to play nicely in the sandbox with NetApp and others. Absolutely. What are the three things that you're hearing from customers that they say EMC crushes it in these three areas over the competition? So, so that's, that's a great question. When it comes to storage, um, the answer is very short and sweet. Fast VP is do, going gangbusters, right? Fast VP attached to both VNX and, and VMAX is through the roof. What does that have to do with VMware? The idea of big pools that automate is a core design construct for cloud models. The second thing that they like is they like the fact that regardless of whether they're at phase one where they're virtualizing the craplications, or if they're in phase two where they're virtualizing the mission critical apps, the things that really matter and carry SLAs, that EMC has got the infrastructure with those characteristics to support those SLAs, right? The third thing is that they love all of the core VMware integration work, right? So vCenter plugins. On that. That's that, I want to drill right. down on that. So, so basically the ability to tightly integrate with uh, vCenter so you can provision, manage, extend storage, do VMware integrated snapshots, support VAI, all those things from the smallest of the small to the biggest of the big is something that's very compelling to the customers, right? We give them a lot of choices and we can make it very, very simple and easy, right? The, uh, the last thing that I'd say, which is a very specific one, is uh, fast cache in the VNX coupled with VMware View or Zen Desktop on top of vSphere is awesome sauce, right? Basically, the ability to uh, deal with the IO density that comes from boot, antivirus, all that stuff when you're virtualizing clients means that if you deploy it on a VNX, you can deploy it not only for a usual 25% guarantee, <laughs> right, but you can actually uh, deploy it with 10x or 20x less spindles than if you didn't have something like fast cache. And by the way, during Chad's world, we're going to do a demonstration. I'll give a little bit of a preview. One of the face melting demos is I'm going to, through some accidents, uh, accidents, disassemble live on stage an array while it's running. Right. Ooh. 
uh, with a workload on it. And the point of that is that fast cache and the, and the design is there so it, it can withstand uh, all of those failure conditions without destaging, right? So all those things. Now, that's just the beginning. The customer then says, how do I want to do backup and recovery for my VMs, right? And the answer is you want to do it with no agents, but you also need to be able to deal with the, I need to recover a file within a VM. Well, what file do you need to recover? I don't know. When did you delete it? I'm not sure. I deleted it sometime in the last three months. Was the file name foobar.doc? Because you're foobard, yeah. right? <laughs> well, you need to have a catalog. So, so you can search yep. for those things and recover the file within the VM. But people want to do that in an agentless way. Avamar does that, right? and then all of these security things. So all of those reasons are the reasons why customers overwhelmingly choose EMC, right? What do you, what do you think but, about But uh, by the way, there's one other thing too. Hopefully, not only are we giving them a good experience, but we're fun, yeah. right? We're fun. <laughs> like, no doubt, the fun factor is on the rise here. Yeah, Dave, I'm just trying to get uh, um, breaking communication from the Skype team, and that I'm trying to Skype in a Skype executive to talk about the Microsoft news. So if Mark, you're listening, you could uh, maybe look into that. So we yeah, might be news, bringing Microsoft in live Skype. via video, Skype, obviously now That's Microsoft. Cool. So, big announcement. So big announcement today, yeah, you saw that. Five billion. Um, yeah. So let's talk about that. I want to pivot off the Skype announcement, Chad, sure. because that is the future infrastructure environment that you have to enable. Yep. Uh, Microsoft essentially conceding unified communications is dead. Yep. They have a huge Xbox presence that's been talked about as the, the crown jewel as we as we were analyzing that uh, first to market last night. Um, Xbox, great network. Voice over IP, once the telephony crown jewel is dead. Yeah. I mean, PBX, digital PBX, goodbye. Voice over IP, Skype killed, video, Facebook, SSD, I mean, you guys have to play in that environment. So yep. talk about the Chad voodoo around the enablement of that. Yep. What has to happen? I mean, obviously virtualization's core to that, but you've got this massive storm of innovation, expectations at the yep. user level is such that I don't, I don't want to have to be forced to take a device. If I want to work on an Xbox 360 or kinetic interface yep. or whatever, yep. I just want it to happen. So what has to happen? So uh, it's actually not a has to happen, it's what's happening. So, you know, 50% of the video demand, video on demand content in North America comes off of EMC. So if you're using a lot of services as a consumer, and maybe, for example, I have an Xbox 360 and a PS3 at home, right? Can't log into the PlayStation Network, unfortunately. <laughs> it's down. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, uh, I use... I use Netflix day in and day is, out. My uh, kids is, love is it. Is PlayStation a customer of EMC? Uh, yeah, yeah, Sony is absolutely a customer of, of EMC. They're, they're, uh, I don't know how much of they're, they're an RSA customer. I think we could have some good conversations uh, around around that stuff. Okay, that's Again, I'm not painting them in a negative picture, as you guys saw. Go, everybody go gets, was, everybody get, that gets was attacked. Bad guys. That was organized crime. Well, that's, that's organized that crime. And, and, yeah. and again, we're not allowed to talk about anything on the RSA front, but you can read between the lines of what Joe has said. And, We've had Sam Curry on right? talking so, about the dark clouds. So, 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 but so again, you said 50% of video on demand, demand is pr provisioned off of EMC, off EMC stores. Today. 50% share. Wow. Right. So, so that's a that's a pretty okay. yep. you know impressive. Matt was saying he, he, you guys think about in the broader storage business. How can we get fifty percent? So, share so you you know you, you follow, the mo yeah. <laughs> follow the model, right? So, so you know EMC in some places is going to be in front of the customer, and sometimes it's going to be a little invisible, and that's cool, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you're enabling exactly like an environment where you're fostering this massive I'll, growth. I'll give you another example, right? So during Paul's keynote, he put up a, a slide that showed the eight top vCloud partners, right, that are in business today offering infrastructure as a service, platform as a service models, right? Did you, so, you know, CSC, Terramark, Verizon, AT&T, Singtel, uh, Blue Lock, you know, and, and others, right? Um, eight out of eight are using EMC on those services, right? The future consumption model of, of cloud for compute is going to be driven uh, uh, and drives a lot of those uh, types of services. Uh, we will be behind the scenes, and not just we will be, we are behind the scenes on that today and now. And I'll give you one more example, right? So infrastructure as a service is one model. We talked about those examples. The other model, of course, is platform as a service. And vCloud Foundry 
you know, Cloud Foundry is now out there, right? And, right? and I don't know whether you guys heard this, but the expectations were pretty low. You know, how many apps, how many developers? In the first two weeks, they had 17,000 developers log in that built 2,000 apps, right? So the demand for, for platform as a service is through the roof. Um, behind the scenes on that, that's uh, powered by VNX. You'll, you don't see it. You don't, uh, you don't interact with it because it's platform as a service. You're using Ruby on Rails, you're using Spring, you're using the frameworks, but underneath that it's running on vSphere and well, it's running on you, EMC. You saw the, you, I'm sure you saw the news last week where the individual from HP updated his LinkedIn profile. That was awesome. Linked some certain stuff and then obviously people started talking about, well wait a minute, this, was, this implies that you know, VMware is going to be the platform, you know, vCloud Foundry is yeah. going to be, and, and of course, you know, they, were, they had previously announced a relationship with Microsoft and yeah. everybody was saying it was going to be Azure. So that was kind of impressive, you know. Yeah. We, we thought that was a real long shot, the whole vCloud Foundry thing and the cloud. getting into the public cloud. Yeah. And so so the, the other thing that I thought was interesting about that HP thing, and again, I don't want to, we all have bad days. Like, hey, I had to do a little tap dancing during one of the keynotes around a demo, right? <laughs> we all have bad days. Yeah. Um, and as vendors, it's as important how you respond to that as anything sure, else, Sure, but there's right? information there that we have to, we can't ignore. You right? can't ignore. So it's, it's in his LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. and, and the thing that was interesting is it also exposed that HP is going to go hard down the path of actually powering their own clouds. EMC and VMware strategy is very focused about enabling the service providers and our partners uh, to create the cloud. Well, and Apotecker announced that yep. you know at the at the analyst meeting yep. in, in I think it was February, basically said we're going to do our own public cloud. Yeah. But you know HP, IBM, they're different animals than than yeah, I, see, I, right? I, I, mean, I guess I guess the question you think is that's the wrong strategy for them. Well, I, I actually I do right. Why, um, why is it the in your so, in your view so it's not the right uh, approach? Imagine for a mo so HP is an amazing company and IBM is an amazing company and they have incredible Indeed. breadth and depth. You know, we think we've got incredible breadth and depth. It was great to see that little uh, little comment that after we did the Hadoop Green Plum uh, announcement that you know they go EMC is now the enterprise Hadoop leader. Now we can dispute that. If, if you want the real story, you can go to wikibon.org <laughs> and siliconangle.com and we'll get but, it. But <laughs> so so you know, but our our breadth is now getting pretty 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 broad. But you know, again, you can't deny that IBM and HP have great breadth. Now the question is, is that do you think? that they can compete in the data center. We will run and operate the data center uh, and operate a service with, with Google or with Amazon, right? Who've been doing it for a long time and proving that model. So, maybe they can, maybe they can't. But where we think the strategy is the wrong strategy is not only if they could, when you're in the business of basically operating the cloud, your uh, intrinsic desire is to make it impossible to get in, to get out of once you get in, right? You, right, that, that, that's the, the built-in model. The California Motel. Right, the California Motel. Yeah. It applies on the infrastructure as a service model, and it also applies on the application layer if you're using frameworks. Conversely, we think that if we can make a community of service providers build compatible open clouds, even though each individual service provider will want you to be, stay with them because they don't want churn, there's an intrinsic mechanism that basically is uh, open competition, which means that you'll have the choice of going from one to the other. In other words, have you ever changed your cell phone number? Yeah, it's a pain. It's a pain. Yeah. How hard was it before there was local number portability? Well, right. It was impossible. You couldn't do it. <laughs> right, you yeah. couldn't do it, right. right? So I think that idea of open uh, 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 capability across a community of service providers is the right strategy for the customers. Well, I guess, I guess my take on that is, um, I'd like to weigh in on this, is if I own the hypervisor, I would say that as well. But if I'm HP and I don't own the hypervisor, I have to take a different strategy, right? So, so I think that, you know, they're EDS, right? They've got to, they've got to compete somehow. So that's, that's not what you asked me though, Dave. No, so, I know. I so asked you, you, the you asked right me strategy. the question of, do you think it's the right yeah. strategy? I understand why they're doing their strategy. Yeah, right. I just don't think it's the right strategy. Yeah, okay, well, like I say, if... if of if, course, you know, I might be a little biased, yeah. right? <laughs> okay. Jeremy That's good. Burton is in the house. All right, we got Hey, so here. so one last thing before I get yanked by Jeremy. Um, you got to if you're watching this and you're at EMC World, you got to go check out the V Labs. We're provisioning any EMC technology out of our demo cloud at the rate of hundreds of VMs per hour. It's packed with people. You get a chance to play with any EMC, any VMware technology 
on the fly. It's awesome. And if you do enough laps, you can get your own Chad's World, you know, and Chad Bobblehead doll. As right, ridiculous here, here. as that sounds. Got to go to the session, 5 o'clock, free Molson beer. Yeah. Wednesday, 5 o'clock, awesome. The nectar of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great, man. Face melting. Face melting. Conversation with Chad Sackick. Thanks so much for coming on the Q.